The future is looking brighter for patients with kidney disease. Not only are new medicines and treatments slowing progression of disease, but new treatments for kidney failure are coming soon as well. Researchers have made breakthrough progress growing kidney cells in the lab for cell therapy of end-stage kidney disease. Long before researchers grow new kidneys in the laboratory or transplant them from animals into people, a combination of cutting-edge nanotechnology and living kidney cells will free patients from the tether of dialysis and provide the benefits of kidney transplant to everyone with kidney failure. Let's see how this universal donor kidney works. Kidneys filter the blood to separate wastes from healthy blood and then concentrate wastes from the whole body into one to two liters of urine each day. The biohybrid kidney does exactly the same thing, unlike dialysis with its heavy machines and batteries and gallons of water, which can never be implanted. The cells that make up the kidney's filter are extraordinarily fragile and leakiness of the kidney's filters underlies almost all of the kidney disease that results in kidney failure and the need for dialysis. Those cells are exceptionally fragile. They do not grow in the dish. So Dr. Fizel and his team designed a new kind of artificial filtration membrane based on the size and shape of healthy kidney cells. This membrane is the first completely new technology in renal replacement in over 25 years. The collaboration with Dr. Shuvo Roy allowed this idea to progress from concept to FDA application. However, it's not just the kidney's filter cells that misbehave. Most human cells really don't look or act in a lab dish the same way they do in a healthy person. The tubule cells that concentrate wastes from the whole body into a little bit of urine don't reabsorb salt and water and don't excrete toxins when grown in an artificial environment. This isn't just a problem for artificial kidneys. Drug companies can't use cells in a dish to test for efficacy or toxicity and medical doctors have to use entire animals to examine mechanisms of disease and effect of treatments. Solving the problem of cell culture stress solves many problems. Dr. Fizel felt that part of the problem was that cell culture was vastly different to a healthy body. Plastic lab dishes are hard. Human tissues are soft. Kidney cells have fluid flowing over them. Cells in a dish are still. We culture kidney cells with serum. But in the body, the cells don't really get exposed to serum. Dr. Fizel started testing these simple factors one by one and in combination. Testing these factors, it's like a centipede driving a bus. If there's 75 feet on the brake pedal and you take one foot off, the bus still doesn't go forward. The cells certainly look different on soft materials than on hard plastic, but they didn't seem to reflect these changes in the proteins they expressed, the key proteins. Enter serendipity. Rachel Evans runs the cell culture in Dr. Fizel's lab, and she had tested one batch of cells seated on soft materials to see if they were making proteins to reabsorb sodium, and they were not. However, she had kept a second batch of cells to test if something went wrong with the first tests. She kept changing the cell culture medium on them until a few more weeks had gone by far longer than most people grow this kind of cell in the lab. She ran the test again on these cells that had been in the dish for weeks, and the cells had started to make the sodium exchanger proteins a basic function of natural kidney cells. From there, the team went on to examine the signaling pathways that governed the response to soft versus stiff materials. By manipulating those pathways with drugs, they were able to coax the cells into pumping salt and water just like they do in a kidney. From the start of the project, we have tried to improve on what we accomplished to strive every day for a better life for patients with kidney failure. 70 years ago, we treated polio with an iron lung, but medical advances have put the iron lung out of the clinic and in a museum. And we strive to do the exact same thing for dialysis machines.